Hatchell Bridge State Park, located in eastern Kentucky, is considered by many to be the best of Kentucky's 52 state parks. Because of its beauty and variety of features, it could easily be ranked amongst the best of the state parks in the nation. First opened by the Lexington Eastern Railroad in 1896, the park has been a place of retreat and adventure for millions of visitors. Within its boundaries are six natural stone arches, two lakes, at least three caves, a lodge, two campgrounds, a swimming pool, a sky lift, and numerous other amenities. Unfortunately, like many parks and places around the world, its beauty is marred by graffiti and vandalism. Most of the graffiti is found on man-made objects, and though unsightly, it is interesting to see the names and dates and people's artistic expressions. Little of the graffiti in the park contains vulgar or unsavory content. What most people consider objectionable is the graffiti found on natural features, such as rocks and trees. The natural bridge itself is one of the most damaged of these areas. People have been carving their names on it since the park was first opened. Graffiti and vandalism is at the heart of a recent controversy which began when it came to light that, without public input or notification, heavy steel bars and gates are to be erected across the entrances to a popular cave in the park. Commonly known as Natural Bridge Cave, it is located just above the lodge between trails 1 and 2, and entering its cool interior is one of the highlights of a hike on a hot summer's day. The purpose of putting gates on this cave is to keep people from freely entering. According to park officials, once the gates are in place, cave access will be allowed only certain times a year by obtaining a permit at the lodge or by going on an official tour. The plans for allowing public access have been changed several times, and it's clear that the park should deem it necessary. Public access could, at any time, be permanently blocked. The initial reason given for limiting public access was to protect an endangered bat known as the Virginia Big-Eared Bat which was first sighted in Kentucky in this cave. Although countless visitors toured this cave in the park's first few decades, some of whom were scientists and biologists, no one reported seeing big-eared bats until the 1950s. Non-endangered bats can almost always be found in this cave, but there apparently has never been a significant number of Virginias roosting here. When it was pointed out that within a few miles of the park there are hundreds of caves where bats can roost, one of which contains as many as 5,000 Virginia big-eared bats, a second justification for gating the cave was given. Vandalism. There is indeed vandalism in Natural Bridge Cave. Most was done by people carving into the rock with sharp objects, like pocket knives, but in a few places spray paint and other markings can be seen. Much of it has been here for decades, but some of it is recent and thanks to good efforts by park personnel in years past, the worst has been removed. Most of what remains, although unsightly, is not obvious without bright lighting, and it appears only on a tiny percentage of the rock surface in the cave. Considering how many millions of visitors have entered this cave, it's amazing that there is not more damage. Numerous questions have been recently raised about why the park seems no longer vigilant in removing evidence of vandalism as soon as it's discovered. Public schools remove graffiti immediately because leaving it in place only invites other acts of vandalism. Although it would take only minutes to remove some of the damage seen in this cave, this is not being done, and the public has been given no explanation why. Other questions are being raised about why the park appears to be doing nothing to stop the carving outside the cave entrance. Here, the concentration of damage is even greater than that seen inside the cave. The gate and bars being placed across the main cave entrance will do nothing to stop vandalism to this limestone rock shelter or anywhere else in the park. Because many people consider the installation of bars and gates an act of vandalism in itself, let's visit a cave about 10 miles away and see what a gated cave looks like. Here we are, and it's obvious that permanent damage has been done to this cave in order to install the bars. Within this cave, there's a huge colony of endangered bats to be protected, so there's some justification for the damage. But there was never evidence of significant numbers of endangered bats living at Natural Bridge Cave, so it appears that such protection is not needed, and that the cave should not be needlessly damaged in this fashion, or made to look like a prison in a state park. Back at Natural Bridge Cave again, 
we must ask how the graffiti and vandalism might be minimized. Better supervision of Natural Bridge Cave and other sensitive areas is certainly the best answer, but better supervision could cost money, and Kentucky State Parks don't always have an abundance of that. Use of more volunteers to clean and patrol the cave might be part of the solution, and electronic surveillance could also play a role. Paying park visitors to help reduce vandalism might be effective, most visitors carry cameras or camera phones, so giving a large financial reward to anyone who provides a photograph which is successfully used to prosecute a vandal might very well discourage such illegal activity. Vandalism might also be discouraged by increasing its penalty from a misdemeanor to a felony, as it is in numerous other states. Only a few decades ago, most everyone tossed trash out of their car windows as they traveled. With proper enforcement and education, the problem has been greatly minimized. Educating the public about how and why to protect our natural inheritance and severely prosecuting those who do damage is perhaps the only long-term solution. Unless we wish to gate off part or all of the park, as has been suggested by certain park employees. Beyond the problems of graffiti and vandalism, controversy is also arising over increasingly restricted access at the park. Not long ago, people could climb on ballast rock for fun and photo ops. Now, such activity is illegal and you can get a visitor hauled into court. Even getting off the trail to get a good picture is a crime. Along many trails in the park, there are railings to keep people where the park thinks they should be. But back when there was more freedom, people could walk up a nearby bank to get the best position to photograph this unique rock. Taken from that location, Balanced Rock crudely resembles the Sphinx in Egypt, which is why, up until a few decades ago, it was called the Sphinx. What was in those days called Balanced Rock is another unique park feature located on a cliff near Natural Bridge. That rock is now off limits to visitors too. Also off limits is Battleship Rock. This tall and beautiful escarpment projects out into the park and standing at its tip resembles being on the bow of a great battleship. The view from that point is one of the best in the park. On the trail to the tip of the battleship is a small natural arch another of the unique places that visitors can no longer see. Managing a place like Natural Bridge State Park is not an easy job. There are always competing voices as to what management directions to take. Having too few regulations and restrictions could bring about quick destruction of the park. Having too many would eliminate its purpose for existence. The present controversies might have been avoided if the various agencies who manage the park would simply have involved the public in major decision-making processes. Natural Bridge is public property, owned by the people of Kentucky. Because it is their property, they have every right to know what is being done with it and have a say therein. Each time that access to parts of the park are restricted, local businesses are damaged because of the loss of tourist trade. Each time that access is restricted for frivolous or unjustified reasons, Respect for the park, its personnel, and its regulations is reduced. Unless there is a great amount of public pressure, access to the most spectacular places in the park will continue to shrink. People who enjoy this beautiful place must quickly decide whether they want all management decisions to be made by government agencies, or whether the public should have management input too. People must quickly decide whether they want the entire park protected from vandalism, or just one cave. And people must decide whether they want a cave which looks like this, or one which resembles this. Whatever decisions are made, it must be borne in mind that the cave is not gated. New and creative ways must be found or protected in the creatures which live therein, or both will eventually be ruined by vandalism. Wherever there are irresponsible and ignorant humans, damage will be done to natural places. It even occurs inside tightly regulated and gated caves, like Mammoth. Unless we are willing to lock off our beautiful places, post armed guards, and keep everyone out, graffiti is going to happen. It can be minimized by good education and good law enforcement, and everyone working together to make this park a better place.